Another one of these live stream videos. Why? Because they get more views than my regular videos. It takes me hours to edit and all that. Really? Yeah. But no. I wanted to give you a heads up on the video that is going to be coming out tonight or in the mornings when you'll probably see it for half of you, most of you. And then talk real quick about the video you just watched today, right? You did watch the one that uh, was released today. I'm kind of behind. Those are from two weeks ago. So I figured I'll give you guys a heads up on that and uh, just talk about what's going on. This coming weekend, I guess what happened last weekend, did I tell you guys about what happened last weekend? Last weekend was not a great weekend. Let's face it. It was a full moon. I'm blaming that, right? Fisherman's excuse, right? Okay. So the weekend before, though, was game on. Those are the videos that you're seeing uh, now that are popping up. So before I go into chatterbaits, this video is going to be mainly about chatterbaits, but real quick, I want to touch on this. That's that bait that you cannot get this color anymore, and I don't know what happened. I mean, the, literally, the day I put the video out and I went to click on the link, it still had this, uh, this exact one. It showed it, the picture of it. I clicked on it where I'd purchased it to reshare it with you guys, and it wouldn't let me. This color is no longer even on there. Like, normally, if they're out of the color, it'll show it, like, with a line across it, right? You guys know AliExpress. Like, this color's not even around. You can still find it. You'll find it in the link, you know, and you click on that, and it's not there. So, I don't know what is up with that. But it's just a white, and I was going to try to show you guys if I haven't already. The belly is, like, pure white. Now, the sides are kind of translucent. translucent. You can kind of see through there, so... It looks like they just took a clear one and painted almost a pearly white on top, on bottom, left the sides kind of clear, and then they just did a little squirt of blue before they put the eyes on. That sucker just looks mean, doesn't he? But I don't think any of that color is as big a deal as how this bait is designed. I'm saying there's others on there that you can get. I shared the link already in that quick video where it showed me catching the big fish and then the two little ones, but today's video was kind of that whole morning experience comparing it against the uh, Pop X, which eventually I wore out the tail on it. It was kind of getting old. So I've repaired it, but I didn't have the feathers. I don't know what happened to my chicken feathers, right? My hackle feathers. I had some, but I don't know what happened to them, but I did have the flashing stuff. So I, I just put some flashing on it. We're going to get out this weekend and throw some more poppers, top waters of various kinds. I got my, uh, Whopper ploppers going to. But this bait definitely walks the dog way faster. And I, I, I hope that you guys figured out. If you watch that video, there's two, basically the short and the long version. I'm going to sum it up one last time in case somebody asks any questions on which one, you know, is this better than this? No. They're actually two different baits in how they work. This little dude is excellent for covering water just like the uh, Pop Max is for like kind of walking it. It does have like a little bit of spitting capabilities. It's got some holes actually that go all the uh, yeah all the way through the side anyway. So I don't know how much of that translates to the actual fish hitting them or not. I think a lot of it's just in that a little bitty thing on the surface with that tail undulating down there, you know. This dude does something totally different. And I managed to get it to do it perfectly because it was doing it. And I was amazed that it was doing it. And in my amazement is when that huge bass, and I saw him just come up, like I saw the side of that fish coming up, you know, and I'm like, I knew it was huge before it even grabbed it. You know, I saw the body, its body, as the way it came up. But what I was doing, I wasn't really just pulling, trying to get it to walk the dog. I was actually... Like if you get the right cadence, just a light little pop, it it pops one way and it pops the other, but they're real little subtle pops. And it, I was doing it perfectly. I caught that huge bass and then I couldn't quite mimic what I was doing when that big bass hit it. And a lot of it was, I think, because I was throwing kind of with the wind, the wind wasn't sideways, then every other time I seemed like I, I, was, I had the wind kind of sideways and it just a little pull on the line wouldn't let this bait work right. 
but basically a, a very slow presentation type bait. And some of you may know this, is, I believe this is a copy of another, I guess I'll call it a famous bait. There used to be, I want to say Rico, and there's a couple others that used to be very, I guess, expensive and hard to get. Some guys were buying. I know for, and I'm, my memory, I know I'm getting old, I'm 50 years old. A lot of guys were buying the Rebels, I think, is what started this. And, and one of the, I can't remember his name now, but I remember one of the actual uh, Bass Pros was had had talked about it before. I, I want to say they were taking Rebels there for a while, and they were kind of customizing the bills similar to what this one is maybe not exactly but then other guys started making actual complete different baits that basically had that but there's something to the shaping of this it's not just a regular you know popper it's designed to do a little something different but it definitely is legit and it works but this works and they're kind of different things and one thing i noticed that i kind of do and i watched matt do it and we get out here, and Matt, I don't even think he owns any little ones. He's not really in true finesse kind of deal like me and Charles. Definitely not BFS. But Matt has a, several, uh, you know, pop maxes. And I think what I typically tend to do is I don't fish these slow enough. Why? Because they walk so good. They are incredible at walking the dog. You know, walking baits, they work as good as any of those, uh, you know, topwater walking baits that are on the market. These little... Uh, Pop Max and Pop X. The baby Pop X, not so much. It actually spits way crazy for how small it is, but these two are amazing walking poppers. So what happens is, I think we get in a hurry, you get out there, cast them, and then you just start walking them. And you're moving them too fast when they want a little bite. And I think that morning, we just happened to luck into it that they definitely wanted it slow. And this one, I was trying to go fast, this will not do much of anything going very fast. It's like a slow, you can, it'll, it'll do a crazy loud pop. And so is, this one will too pretty much. I mean, this one is probably the least of the loud pops, but the Pop X or Pop Max is also a good popper. The problem with it is just knowing to slow down with a popper when to go real slow and subtle or when to pick up the pace or when to just put it down and get a whopper plopper or a walking bait or a frog or you know something else but it was game on i think all these are good baits um this is still i'm gonna have to call this my favorite now you guys didn't see it because i don't think i was actually making videos then you saw me, I've caught some big bass, I've caught some big bass on a lot of these different poppers, but I've gone on a crazy tear with that sucker, that exact color. I think it was my other bait. I think I lost one since then and then caught a ton on this one too. But I have pulled in on, on that exact color uh, mega bass bait, two bass at once like I did with this guy. So it, I think it takes a pretty awesome bait to get them, you know, that fired up when they're trying to take it from the other ones. It's kind of a hard feat to do. I almost did it with the uh, jabber jaw right off the bat, so the, I, I just I think the jabber jaw is also a very good bait. But that is a legit bait. I'm sorry you can't get the color and the link I shared in the other video. And if you want to look way back, I'm not going to try to even track them down or find the link again. But this popper is actually a decent popper. It came in like a five pack, and I've put the tail on it. it. They came without tails, and I just made that one, and it's set in a box for like two years now. But these were. Uh, ebay poppers and i'm pretty sure all you got to do is go to ebay and put a bass fishing popper and be looking for like a five pack it'll be this color and five other similar ones and they always got them setting in like a wooden box with like straw in it almost looks like an easter basket type deal i want to say they were like eight dollars for four or five of them or something like that so these are and they're also excellent little bitty poppers now this one, I don't know for sure, but you got to be careful with these. They will rust. They just, a little bit of moisture and they set. You almost have to like blow dry them, you know, when you get done with them kind of deal with the cheap ones. Now this one, like I said, it's a couple years old. I've, I've, you know, I've put that tail on it and I've just been fishing it. The hooks are still sharp. They're, you know, it just gets a little kind of rust in spots and stuff if you're not real careful with them. This one... This one probably will too. The, even the Mega Bass ones will if you aren't careful enough. But they, it takes them longer to, to do it. But 
Anyway, enough about poppers. Let's go to chatterbaits. I'm gonna put my poppers up. But I've had, over the last couple years anyway, I've had way more luck on poppers than I have anything top water. I don't know, I don't understand exactly why. Because I've tried them all. I will say though, I've had horrible luck. I've had good luck with the the whopper ploppers what fell off the face of the earth for me. Like the whopper plopper that first year it was out, maybe even the second, whopper plopper was like it was on. The last year, maybe almost two years, Whopper Pluppers have not been good. Buzzbait's kind of, for me, kicked back in, but they're hit and miss. And I will say, you, know, you guys watched the video, I missed a pretty nice one that first, well, I think one of the first times we went with Matt. Uh, and then just this last weekend, my biggest fish, I threw a Buzzbait out on that new color we talked about getting with Charles, that black and yellow skirt i put on a on a buzz bait and proceeded to i don't know somewhere three or four pounder lost him so i don't know luck on top water i don't have it this year so far well i say that but then i threw that popper and i caught a five pounder caught the doubles but i'm talking like consistent luck you know trip in trip out top water is a little finicky not as good consistently as I am usually usually with chatterbaits. Last weekend, wasn't that good on chatterbaits. The weekend before that you're getting ready to see drop tonight or in the morning, probably when you guys will be able to watch it sometime tomorrow. And then it's just part one, and then there's a part two. And I'm sorry for that, but there's a ton of footage. And I was going to link it all together, but it would have been like a two-hour video. So I, I'm trying to split it up. I think this first one's like 20-something. And the reason I really split it up, because it was sort of a struggle. You guys, that popper video was in front of me switching to chatterbaits. And probably, I probably switched a little too early. Probably a little too antsy and went to chatterbaits. Because in the middle of the chatterbait video is when I actually would start throwing some uh, poppers again. And that's when I got the double on the poppers and a few other things. And then we went back to chatterbaits once the sun started popping out a little more. Then it was kind of game on. They got you could get down in the grass, but anyway, this first video that's going to drop tomorrow on the chatterbaits is kind of me just kind of trying to find colors, and then once we found a color, you know, kind of going, okay, let's go. We got it now. Then the ne next video you'll see probably uh, could be even tomorrow, tomorrow night, or the next day, which will be uh, Thursday, is just a full on when we got on them and just started catching a lot of chatterbait bass so much so that we got pretty much tired but anyway i want to talk about that and i'll tell you a little spoiler in the video i switched from that white popper and i thought well i went with white chatterbait and although it sort of worked it wasn't the greatest bait in the world it's almost like they were just hitting at it and the bait i tried right off the bat was the one that had worked the last time I was at that place. If you guys remember, I lost it in the tree. I had a video where it shows me climbing up in the tree and getting it, because at the time, it was the only one I had. I've since Now I have two of them. But uh, I tried that. It was still kind of dark, and it, I was struggling. Like, I was kind of this one, kind of that one. I tried a few other colors, and I mean, I was like, oh, I don't know if there... And even Charles, I even got him on the footage. Is like, maybe there's not a chatterbait bite going on today. I'm like... I didn't say it, but I'm thinking, come on, Charles, you know me. There's always a chatterbait bite going on. So anyway, that's what you'll see coming out in that. But I want to talk real quick, as you'll also see, I didn't even really set out to, I guess, fine-tune or, you know, realize there's a total difference. And I guess I kind of knew there was, but it's kind of been a while since I've thrown so many different chatterbaits. Because my main staple, and I've actually even bought another one off of, uh, where did it go? I know I got it. Where's it at? Hang on. No, not this crazy big heavy one. This dude right here. I bought another Z-Man Original Chatterbait. And I put, I'm trying this skirt, but I'm going to go back if I have to, just a black and blue. But that's a black and blue gold blade, half ounce. There's that big old hook. And as long as you got a medium heavy rod and you do the, you know, we've talked about the sweeping hook and you'll see it more in this video on there's a certain trick to setting the hook on a chatterbait 
uh, to, to ensure that you get a good hookup. You, you might be able to just, because I've seen kids, I've seen, uh, I've had Olivia and just, I've watched people not even really set the hook on a chatterbait and still manage to get fish in. So sometimes it's just luck of the draw, but the best way to ensure a good hookup, I've talked about that before. But for years, that's just what I threw. Well, that's all you could throw for the, at the, in the beginning. That's all you could get. The Z-Man original came out with that half ounce, and they I think they had quarter, three eighths, half, or whatever. But half ounce is what I threw. So then I decided, and I've tried three eighths here and there. And what I've kind of realized that the minute you add a little weight to the head, the minute you add a little bigger hook, the minute you add a tra kind of like adding a different trailer, you start to slow down how that bait, the, as you know, the vibration of the bait, you start slowing down. You kind of slow down the, its ability to hunt somewhat. And I don't have one right here, but one of the little, I, I found a trick at that little test place if you guys have ever watched me go to that pit and i'm going to use one of these micros because i don't have the flashbacks on me right at the moment they're over where i have to get up but i had bought a few of those little flashback and they come with the not a elastic and it tore i'd only had a couple of the and before i could even put a trailer on it was the all gold so it's a little sixteenth ounce gold blade, gold head hook was even like a gold color, and I'm like, I wonder if you know those little bass. They were so on fire like piranhas. I'm like, I bet I can catch them just what I consider like a bear hook, right? So I just threw that out there, and when I was working it, I was amazed at how that would just jump around. There was no skirt, there was no anything on it, and for the that little you know. 16th ounce flashback micro chatterbait just all gold it was just gold thing just flashing around out there and the way it was jumping like this bass just came out of nowhere and grabbed it i'm like oh okay so you can kind of translate i'm not saying you can go because i found that when you're throwing one of these uh chatterbaits i don't care what brand you have if you're throwing it with just the skirt material and no trailer whatsoever behind it it is hard to get a fish to hit that thing now, I don't know why. I've honestly not thrown a big one totally bare to just see what it would do. I don't have any idea for sure. I guess I could try that or try one with just a zinker's full length maybe. I don't know. I might try something like that. But what I have found out is that, and I'm not sure which way they want them. I know that day we were out there catching them, I had the right color and the right action. But I bought this big, huge honking one, and this sucker, just with the, the skinniest trailer you can put on it, does not have a ton of action. It's just so heavy with that little blade. It, it's, I mean, it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. It, that big, heavy weight takes some of the thump out of it. So if you want the most, what I consider, that's what's sticking with, I'm not talking about going with the bigger blades, like they make a big bladed one now, this and that and all that. I'm talking about a regular standard size blade what i found is if you use a 3 8 and these little knockoffs work i think in my opinion even better because not only do they have and i'll show you by showing you there's a regular half ounce jackhammer but even a 3 8 and hang on i got one somewhere in here hang on i got one i got one i gotta find it where is it well, I don't know what I did with it. I had a 3 8 ounce jackhammer. I can't find it at the moment. But even the, the new Z-Man, the little mini they got out, the Mini Max, it does come with a little bit smaller hook. But... Even the older, because they've had the quarter ounce, and that's like a quarter ounce. Uh, they've made a little mini chatterbait for years. But it's got a big old hook on it. And when you have those big hooks, like here's the, 
half ounce jackhammer and then there's the uh, 3 8 ounce knockoff but those little 3 8 ounce ones when you get them rigged up with just like a zinkers because the zinkers is real light like if you use that zinkers cut down it's not very heavy and there's not hardly any resistance and I feel that that is the best like I can feel it vibrating harder out of all these now those ones Charles has some I don't really care I don't know maybe you just need to get one from him because you can't get him anyway he somehow Cass King sent him these chatterbaits that he loves them but they do vibrate pretty hard but I think this is your best bet when you're needing that jumping around, hard vibrating, which in my opinion is probably when there isn't much grass around, but maybe when there's a ton of grass around to uh, pull them out of the grass. But then there's times when they're, they're going to want something with a little more kick, or maybe they want subtle. Maybe they're not you know, in the mood for a crazy vibration. So that's when you would go up to like a half ounce with a some kind of bigger trailer but that doesn't have a lot of kick because there's one of the knockoffs that's a half ounce with a little bigger hook and this bait right here compared to wherever I put the other one so here's the difference between the and I'm going to use these as an example the ones from AliExpress there's their uh, 3 8 there's their half ounce. And not only is the head size and the weight difference, they also have, I'll try to show you. They have a different hook size by a little bit. It's not a lot different, but it's enough to, I think, also let this bait move a little bit, uh, vibrate just a little bit harder because there's less weight there to the, I guess weight to blade ratio. Now some of you probably say, well, there's certain other men, there may be Picasso's this and that have a little bit bigger blade that vibrate harder or whatever. But as far as in the Z-Man spectrum of the jackhammers, the originals, and these knockoffs that are basically, uh, they look just like them. I think there's probably a time and place for any given different type but my favorite way that for this summer anyway and I think it's when the water temps also when you have warm water fish are real active you want your bait to be real active so you want that you know smaller lighter bait that's going to chatter I'll just call it chatter harder with the smaller lighter trailer that's going to let it you know when you're changing up your retrieve it's going to let it jump you know kind of hunt one way just a little and a lot of times it's just a little movement this way or that way if you've already got one that's what I call tracking and he's already spotted it, whether he's over here, back here, he's kind of eyeballing it. Maybe he's easing in on it and you're coming along. Because I try to, I don't do it all the time. I try to run these things about as slow as I can and then just uh, speed them up usually, make them kind of dart. Now, sometimes I'll be running, I'll just, you know, kill it for a second and then pick them back up. But usually when I pick it back up, I, I kind of give it a little dart. And I feel that's when... You're kind of imitating whether you're bouncing off grass or off of, you know, some kind of cover or whatever. That thing just gives an erratic movement, which will make them, if they were hesitant to hitting it, they will hit it. But a lot of times when you've got a bite on, you're just, you know, like I've seen a lot of guys talk about, just throw it out and reel it back. I never like to do that, but if I'm doing that, I'm going to throw it out and I'm going to reel it back as slow as I can. But I, I have it in my head. I, I can't hardly ever do that. I have to give it something you know a little rod twitch a little extra crank i just have that to where i hardly ever throw any and that's any bait almost anything i throw whether it's a worm on the bottom one of these a buzz bait whopper plopper i i start to i that's what i call my jerk bait uh i have to give it something like a jerk bait you can't just throw a jerk bait out and reel it back you can i know somebody's probably oh i've caught them that way i'm not saying but the way a jerk bait is designed for that hard hit, I feel that almost every bait, whether it be a shaky hit on bottom or a whopper plopper or whatever, can benefit from doing that change up. Because if you ever watch fish in aquariums or whatever, almost anywhere 
on tape that people have recorded fish swimming around. When they're moving, when they're going from one place to the other, hardly ever do they just come at this pace that, you know, just a steady going. There's usually, especially the ones if they're if there's something going on, they're they are erratic swimming fish that usually get eaten. And so that's why I like to change up something in my bait. So anyway, what I'm going to do this weekend coming up, and I've added this one. I bought this bait, and I have caught a few fish on it, but I noticed something was different. I know, I'm slow. It took me like a week or so to realize, like, that thing had a silver blade. And almost everything, like I got the uh, War Eagle, different, a couple different... Oh, that thing's got a burr on it already. I need to fix that. But the... You know, War Eagle spinner baits are different ones. Usually your, uh, whether it be a chartreuse colored one or like a fire tiger, usually comes with some kind of gold blade, not silver, right? Because the lower light and gold and all that. So I painted this one gold to just try it. Because I have not had a lot of luck with anything chartreuse. And I'm tempted to paint these blades gold. The all white, the white and chartreuse or this guy it's like they're just not, they're not kicking in like I would think they would. If you remember, I, I tried to make one. I got one. There's that bait. I just picked it up. I wasn't even trying to find it. Remember I was telling you guys I had a 3 8 jackhammer? I just found it when I was looking for this one. Now this is not, I tried to make that out of a booyah skirt and the white one. But I got the actual two of them coming. That color... And this color with that actual trailer is the closest I've come to a white chatterbait just being kind of on fire. This one's on fire and I lost it, that color. And then this color just always seems to be able to pull some fish in no matter what. But this is going back to the blade size. Let me show you real quick. So if you take a regular, make sure to look at the... So the regular jackhammers, there's a half ounce and a three eighths ounce, but they have the same hook. But this one still should, a three eighths should kind of move around a little more than the uh, half, but they do have the same hook size. I thought I had a problem if you guys have, had, haven't caught on since I had talked about, I thought I might have an issue with the smaller hooks, right on the three eighths ounce knockoffs. I found out that it's probably that was just me. I don't think the hooks are as big an issue. They're an issue if you just yank like a jerk, uh, like a jig, you know, like you've got a jig, like a jig bite. Like if you just feel something, you just yank as hard as you can, like I've talked about before. Because I think that smaller hook, if you just yank like that, yes, you are less likely to get a good hook set. But I'm finding that as long as I feel the weight of the fish before I really put the power into a hook set. I'm hardly losing any fish and I've switched to the, I've got the medium heavy Bass Pro Shops rod and uh, the purple rod isn't too bad either. I thought my 13 fishing fake black was a very good chatterbait rod, but it is definitely not the hookup ratio as the Bass Pro Shops rod. So I might buy the medium heavy 13 fishing one just to try it because I do like that rod and I'll use the uh, fake black medium for uh, rattle traps. So we've got to look forward to that. But this weekend I'm going, we, we might go, me and Charles might go right back to that same place because it's been a couple weeks now. And if we do go back right there, I'm going to try to get on another cheddar bait bite and it'll probably be this color again because that's, if you, when you see the video, you'll see that the crawdads they start spitting up are almost identical to this color. So this color and this action was just on fire. This bait, I don't remember which one. I may have switched out, but both of these have seen action and the heads are getting chewed up. So I'm going to try to get back on that. I haven't given up on this, but if any of you guys were watching, paying attention, wondering uh, what do you think of this, Charlie? I fished it two different days. Have yet to even get a hit on it. I've tried it a few different ways, bouncing it off bottom, running it across out in deeper water. I I may need to put a lot bigger skirt or skirt trailer on it. I I mainly was just running uh, one of these. I had one of those uh, sapphire blue uh, 
that's the baby rage menace. Maybe I need to get a rage menace. Maybe I need to get an actual full size, you know, something big on it. But I think it's kind of one of those novelty things for the, me and the way I fish. But I'm not giving up on it. I paid $12 for that thing. I'm going to try to get it out there and catch and fish. I think it's, it's not that it's more of a letdown. If you guys remember that crazy, huge, like, two-ounce uh, Picasso one I bought, that sucker was a nightmare. This one definitely, you can throw it out. I was throwing it with the Bass Pro Shops rod. It throws it out. It comes back. But it's it's almost like a muted uh, vibration, which should still get bit. I just, I got to figure out, you know, what kind of uh, trailer would work with that bigger head or something. Maybe a full-size zinkers I might try on it, just throwing it kind of. Because you can run it in fairly deep water, still chattering, and it's dragging around along the bottom. I didn't really chew up the paint yet because where I was is kind of mucky a little bit. But I don't know, maybe bouncing off rocks. Well, I'm not giving up on it, but as of right now, it's a no for me, dog. I can't recommend you guys to buy an ounce and a quarter uh, jackhammer for 12 bucks, even for 12 bucks or wherever they are now. They're probably not on sale anymore. What I can recommend are these AliExpress knockoffs. And I want to talk real quick about one of the issues I had, but I think it was just because I wasn't paying attention, and I try to look at these now and double-check them. These are designed... Oh, boy, that one stuck me right in the thing. So here, I'll show you two of the exact same color baits. So these are designed like exactly like the jackhammer. This comes out... And here's a jackhammer. Let me try to get the focus. So the wire is molded in on top and it comes out and they bend it back and around into that little groove, which lets it be almost impossible for there's no way that blade would stick or catch or come out right on the jackhammer. And I've yet to have any issues. I don't have a ton of jackhammers, but four or five or six, however many I've owned, never had an issue with one. I own like 15 or more of these now of the knockoffs and they're designed the same way. And I did spot, I had another one because what happened with that one is I'm pretty sure if it just wasn't bent right, it bent right and down far enough at the factory or for whatever reason, I just came back with, and I actually still have it sitting here. A little dink jumped and spit it back out, and this is what I sh came back with. So this had just fallen off. I, I thought at first maybe that broke because when I wasn't paying attention, I thought both of these on this one was designed to where it just was the whole thing was, I, guess, I wasn't paying much attention. So they're just like the jackhammer. So And let me look at some of these to see. And if you look, this is my old jackhammer. It's almost like, see how that one is almost coming out further? Look at that. See that? It's like over time, you get hung on a tree, you know what I mean? You yank and tug after a while. See how that's wanting to, it's almost to the edge? So you just have to be careful. If you buy these jackhammer knockoffs, or the jackhammer for that matter, and they get old, double check that. Because you want to make sure that stays down in there. Because what happens is it's not squeezed into itself. It's just pushed down into that little notch. And it don't take much. You know, all it has to do is barely pass as thick as that is. And that will that will come off in a fish jerking and shaking. So, and actually this one right here is not in there right. I can show you that right now. Something about the white-headed ones. I don't know if you guys, well, that focus. Come on, white. See that one? It's already out there. So let me show you what I recommend. I never even paid attention to this one. Just coming in with your pliers, and, and it should be all right. I mean, it should take. And if you were, I guess if you, a guy was real worried about them, and you felt like you couldn't get it to crimp down in there further like it should be. I would almost say you could uh, 
I don't know, touch of, say, a JB Clean It or something, touch of JB Weld or something, I don't know. That one should be fine. It's just one of those deals you got to double check. Like this, there's a knockoff. It's way down in there, fine. That thing's beat up. Look at that. That bait's been beat to heck. And these, I'll throw them everywhere, over. I'll drag them over rocks and whatever. They do get beat up, The whether they're the... There's a... This is the knock. Here's the knockoff. He's taking a little bit of a beating. There's the actual jackhammer. You can tell by because they have the weight marked down there. He's starting to take a little bit of a beating. Of course, the greens come off all the. So yeah, the. Where's my, oh my God, that thing is like a camouflage. I can never find it. Here it is. The thing about the the original one, the Z-Man original, and I think the customs are the same way. They come out the front, and they've got them the way the process, where they bend them down, and they don't stick back in, but they're, I've never, and I shouldn't say that because I'll go out and lose this bait tomorrow or when I fish. I've never lost uh, this off one of these, the Z-Man Originals. But that isn't pushed down in. It's just pushed back, twisted back and around into itself. And I don't know if they're glued or just the paint or what's holding them. But I don't think I've ever had an original one fall off. I have had, and it did happen to me, right when I sold them the dollar. He was having an issue with the custom. He would throw it, and somehow the blade would get caught in that little kink spot. I don't know what he was doing, but like it happened more than once that day we were out fishing with a custom. And you don't really have that happen with the jackhammers or these knockoffs, but like I said, the, some of these knockoffs, and all of them look good except for this white one. I need to check all my white ones, I guess. The white ones are notorious. Yeah, I will say there's a different way that they're pushed in for whatever reason. Like that is my... Uh, hold on. That one's in there awesome. That one's in there, but it could be better. That one's kind of like the white one. It's almost like they had too much material, so instead of pushing it like straight down, they went sideways. And so out of the... All the ones I've looked at, these two look like the most worrisome to me. Like right now, they're fine. But after using them a little bit, you maybe get caught in a tree or, you know, on something and you pull and tug. I could very easily see that pulling out just far enough for that little blade to, you know. Anyway, I'll try to squeeze those back in at some point in time. It's almost like they were... If you can see that angle. It's almost like they weren't bent around at the right angle to be pushed in there the, quite the right way they were supposed to be. But anyway, that's enough about that. We're almost 40 minutes in. Stay tuned. Got a lot of that. Whoa, Jesus. What was that? That's my phone. It's a scam likely. <laughs> Sorry about that. That scared me too, right? I'm going to get out here fishing all these, and uh, you'll see in the videos I talk about rods and I talk about other stuff. And in the next video, I'm going to try to go into more detail on where and how I fish. But you've heard a lot of people talk about it. And I will say that other than Tactical Bassin, of course, Brett Height, and then uh, Gene Jensen, the Fluke Master, everybody else that I guess I would say are like me, out there putting out YouTube videos trying to show you how to fish chatterbait, I think they're all wrong. They're not, I don't think they're, I'm not saying they don't know what they're doing and maybe some of that works for them, but some of the ways they're telling and talking about a chatterbait and what it does and stuff like that, I'm like, oh, dude, I'm not listening. Like, who would listen? I don't know. So anyway, if you don't believe me, check out Tactical Bassin, uh, uh, Brett Height, 
you guys know who that is, right? And then, uh, of course, Fluke Master. I just watched another video of his, him talking about it down in Florida. And, which I don't, I just don't, I'm not a burner, but he talked about, it was that video where he's talking about that kid had just won a couple uh, tournaments or that one tournament was won and another one almost won by kind of burning one through lily pads or whatever. I'm not really a burner of anything. Chatterbaits, crankbaits. I'll go fast. I'll do the burn, burn, pause thing. I'll just try a lot of different stuff in the winter. But usually in summertime, I might be going fast, but I'm I'm usually going erratic. I'm not really just throwing it out and burning it. I usually don't feel the need, or when I have tried it, I don't. It doesn't feel like it works as well for me. But I'm not down there fishing in Florida and some of the, you know, where there's a bigger bass and maybe they're competing with each other, afraid that other, that bait's going to get away or whatever. But anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. Stay tuned. I've got. Uh, I guess that's enough about chatterbaits. I'm gonna go into. And you guys comment if you want to see a full-on, like, one video, probably out on the water, even more in-depth than this, me showing you how I'm casting. Because I guess you just watch me doing it, but I'm not really explaining a lot sometimes about how I'm reeling and working and twitching and what I'm feeling for and all that kind of stuff. But I'd be more than happy to do a more in-depth on-the-water one, or I could do a thing here where I could get a piece of paper kind of like if you watch somebody making up a game plan for a game or a workout routine on where in the water columns or what kind of banks and what I where I like fishing to chatterbait more than any other time or where I think I'm going to have the best luck and that kind of stuff but typically if the banks are like this it's probably a rattle trap or a squirt jabber jaw nowadays or a deep jabber jaw if the banks are like this and especially if they got grass, or if they're like this and they got grass, or especially if they're like this, just sloping slow or even flats with grass, that's chatterbait. Game on. All day long, unless they ain't hitting chatterbait. Then throw a rattle trap, throw a jabber jaw, or whatever your favorite other bait. And the one bait that I need to get more, and I talked about doing it, was spinner baits and just an underspin or a swim bait in general. I'm totally almost left that uh that ship has already sailed this year almost pretty much uh i need to work on that game because i think this last weekend if i would have stopped throwing the chatterbaits sooner i mean i caught some fish but i think i could have got on maybe an underspin possibly a spinnerbait bite there's just times i've seen it where i'm throwing chatterbaits and i'll grab a spinnerbait and it's like a whole throwing a whole and i guess i am throwing a whole different bait but you wouldn't think that a chatterbait is that far off a spinnerbait, but I've seen the days throwing at the same spot, same, uh, roughly the same speed where a spinnerbait will get hit over a chatterbait. Still ain't going to make me switch to spinnerbaits. I fished those for years before the chatterbait ever came out. They do work. Underspins really do work at times, too, when they're just that, they're not in the mood for that real flashy, real you know, loud, they're just wanting that, like a, I don't know, just a little fish swimming by them. Like, sometimes they can't resist that. So I might try to get that going a little more. And then before I get out of here, if you haven't been paying attention to my reel situation, you probably, I've probably totally lost you guys on the rod situation. But the reels, I've sold off a lot of reels. A lot of it was just because uh, either I felt one of these were better or they no longer make the other ones. Or I can't get them they're too hard to get so I'm not gonna mess with trying to keep those around and because I'd like to try to keep stuff I can recommend to you guys you know that's just like I'm not saying I'm gonna get rid of them all but if all of a sudden you couldn't get any of these knockoff chatterbaits I'm liable to go on another chatterbait mission finding some other one maybe right back to the z-man originals because you seem to always be able to get those for five dollars or less they're on sale a lot of times for 350 and they do flat work but on the reels, and I just watched Jimmy uh, Raw fishing. He just did his little uh, on the water cat, uh, the kestrel, and I had one one of you guys. I don't even think you're a subscriber, but somebody was commenting like, "Well, you what did you even say about the kestrel?" You know, in that video I did when I was talking about the real test, his take on it by watching him and his hand language not body language but his hand language and just the way he was talking about it he didn't seem that impressed with that reel you could just tell i could just get it out of the way he was talking it was like he wasn't 
super impressed with the reel. Well, Jimmy at Rawr Fishing, he definitely doesn't seem that impressed with the reel. And he at one time was kind of a cast king guy, right? So in my opinion, they're still the best reel. Even over this guy. This guy's like 300 bucks, right? 280, 300, whatever. Yes, it, that, this is the best reel at the moment. For BFS, that's the best reel. But it's got some flaws and it's expensive. This reel, they've kind of fixed the flaws. No, it's not dynamic braking. Oh my God. But you know what? It just flat out works. I picked this one up, caught it on sale for $61. The other one I gave like $75. I sold it to Charles because you can't get the dynamic ones anymore. So I'll probably buy another one of these. I'm, I'm up in the air. But this reel is what I recommend. You guys don't know what this is? Dark Wolf Ultra. That is an awesome reel. It'll hold enough 10 pound line. You can get out, kind of fish regular. You can get down in there, go to little creeks and streams, do pretty much anything you want to do BFS. This will handle it up to 10 pound test, all the way down to whatever. Uh, fairly decent as far as, uh, which I use braids, so I don't have any issue with line like getting up and into the, between the spool and the frame. Uh, now that the magnet's fixed, that, that's roughly where I cast it. I don't have any issue. You don't have to add magnets. It's got good solid brakes. It just works good. Drag clicker's good. Uh, this one, for some reason, hear that? That sucks. And I've taken it apart trying to fix it. It's got the clicking thing up in here. It's like just plastic. And that part, the other ones all worked better. This one doesn't. That is the only flaw I've seen on this reel. But it's free. So far, no uh, issues. Now, what I'm doing, because, and I can't remember your name, and I apologize. There's a subscriber. He's been... I wouldn't say hounding me, but almost any time I start talking about little BFS reels, he's like, dude, I'm telling you, that Kingdom Micro, you know, he talks about having one. I, I'm sorry I forget your name at the moment. I'll remember it once the video's done. But uh, he's pushing that reel to me anyway or to any of you guys reading the comments. So I ordered one of those. It comes with the shallow and the deep spool. I think that it's the Kingdom Micro Fly. It's the black reel with the purple spools and some purple little highlights. But then I also ordered the silver one, which is the uh, Solo King uh, Acura, because I think that's the one I'm going to like to basically take the place of a few of where I would put a zillion. So what we're going to do, here's the thing, though. We're going to have to hope that they got a strong enough drag and the frame being plastic won't just break apart with 15 pound test because I'm going to use the deeper spools. What I think I'll have is kind of what I have with the zillions in a cheaper version, right? They were only $75, $78 reels. But if I can go out there with 15 pound test, throw chatter baits with them, have, you know, strong enough drags, throw them on medium heavy rods with that deeper spool. I think the deeper spool is so light though, with the 15 pound test, I can be able to throw light bait, maybe not truly BFS baits, but these little poppers, or you know, some of this little, like roughly four gram stuff we're gonna try. Because this reel, that SV Boost, I'm telling you right now, I can throw very lightweight baits, even though I've got 15 pound braid, or what the plan is, I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna go to my original plan. You guys probably remember me talking when I bought these. I wanted one with 15 pound, I wanted one with 10. Right now I have both with 15 on a, basically some chatterbait craze, right? I'm trying to get chatterbait styled in. But that'll still be the plan. And here's what's probably gonna happen. I'm gonna have the Bass Pro Shops rod. It's gonna have the Solo King Acura on it because that'll match up real well. It'll balance even better with the lighter reel on the front. I can put the weight on the back, less weight. It'll balance the rod gonna be awesome hopefully that reel will work for it because i've already had this one on there just to you know test how it's going to palm it won't palm as good as this this is more rounded these the acura and the uh microfly come with the actual black knight 2 framing which has got a few more sharp it not i don't even want to call them sharp but they're not as smooth as the edges on this reel but almost the same exact feel you're getting nitpicky when you get to that point but i'm going to have that reel on that it'll free up these what I'm basically going to do is I need to just break down and buy it. I'm going to buy the medium heavy 13 fishing fate black and I'm going to have the, the medium and the medium heavy six foot. They're both uh, six foot seven. 
and I'll have 15 pound on the medium heavy, 10 pound on the medium, and then I'll have those two rod and reel combos basically for my, you know, when I need that, because they're, they're a touch more sensitive than these other rods. They're that uh, Fate Black, I'm, I'm just telling you guys, for a $79 rod, that the, the blank, the reel seat, just everything, that is a quality rod for 80 bucks. So I'll probably buy the medium heavy from Tackle Warehouse, put the zillions on them, because they just match up awesome. They go together. And then I'll take, I'll probably get two so I'll probably end up getting another Bass Pro Shops rod. I may wait for it to go on sale because 120 bucks, I'd rather spend 100 for one. But if I have to, they, I do like the action in those. So then the purple ones that are coming or the pink ones or whatever, this little dude and maybe a couple others are going to fill out my little ultralight uh, rods. So, uh... Oh, shoot, I can't even think. I got so many rods over there now, I can't even think of all the names of them all. But, you know, the Lure Star Streamers, the uh, Rainy Stream, even the, because uh, I, st I still have the Zephyr Ultralight, like uh, Jimmy from RAR was fishing the Kestrel on. I've got that rod. I've got the cheap uh, Toma rod, which with a lot of silver. I don't know, I may get one of those silver uh, reels for it. But so I got a lot of rods, and so I'm going to go with some of these cheaper reels because you can still get them, and then all the parts will interchange, right? Almost anything internal other than the actual braking system and the spool itself. But the gearing, I, I technically, if I wanted to, I could change the gears. I could turn a black, uh, black, the Dark Wolf Ultra, I could put eight to one gears out of the one of the other ones if I wanted to kind of deal. But I love these. I'm hoping... Everything holds up for 15 pound braid. That could be the deal breaker. So I just ordered two, one of each. I'm gonna try them with the heavy stuff. If we got it, run into issues like we did with that uh, crazy carbon light reel that just shot craps, so like two days of fishing. But you're getting ready to see, that's another thing as I get out of here, I'm gonna keep it under an hour. You're gonna see now, cause I talked about it in one of these live streams, the carbon light, and I, I took that whole combo back to Bass Pro Shops, got a six foot six. And I didn't get enough fishing in this weekend to find out. I mean, I think it's exactly the same, and it's just a three inches shorter, and it's a lighter combo overall. It makes a lighter combo overall, but it does the same job. But I'm going to try to get in this weekend. There's a possibility I'm going to have the six foot six and the six foot nine with two of the Acuras on it, and that'll just cover that with uh, these two reels. That'll cover all of my big bait stuff. And then I'll ha still have the purple. Uh, contest rods with probably a black knight two and one you know some of the purpley uh either the kingdom reels or maybe even a black knight two because i did like the black knight i'll probably get another actually i have a black knight two it's down at the lake right now noah i think he fished it once but it's setting down at the lake but it's the original one if you guys remember the original one it's got dynamic brakes that i pulled i heated the magnets out put them back in and but it still works fine it's definitely been through some crap though so i'll probably get it in the purple rods will have some kind of purpley uh of these smaller reels on them then all of my bigger from power bfs up will be done basically with those two for now anyway the two zillions and then some of these littler same kind of uh variants of the dark wolf ultra black knight 2 acura uh microfly I know, I still got this dude, but this I'm having issues with this dude. I'm working on him. I'm working on him. You guys remember that dude? Anyway, he's still around. <laughs> I just... I don't know. And then I'm still trying to talk myself into keeping this and not selling it, because there's part... Oh, I still got the, the Corrado's floating around here, too. Man, I love the overall looks of this reel, performance that still looks gaudy to me it looks weird i'm trying to make myself like that it's hard to do but what's starting to get to me and I, you'll hear me comment about it here and there and if you guys have any one of these you'll know exactly what i'm talking about that right there those teeth will cut into you like teeth you're not paying attention how you're palming and next thing you know, you'll be like, what is that digging? It, it had, doesn't leave like a mark, but it's just like one of those little annoyance type things, you know? And I'm like, I paid $300 for this. Well, almost. And it like gets to annoying me. But, I, you know, should I just wear my gloves constantly? Should I come right off out of the gate and put a chunk of tape on that or on my hand or something? 
you know, but I shouldn't have to do all that. It palms better than this reel, but I don't get any, once I'm palming this and I'm out fishing it, there's nothing on here. See how they, look, oh my God, look how they did that. That is awesome. You guys did it on your Corrado. Why wouldn't they have done that on that reel? And left it looking funky like that. I just do not, I, it does, makes it easier. You can come right over here and, and adjust that easier, but it's almost a set it and forget it reel. I do like, you know, it. There, it's function works. Now let's check here. I haven't checked it in a while. I just thought of that. Here's my other issue. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> it, it has this crazy something is bound up. It's got to be the roller bearing, the anti-reverse, the thing that doesn't let it come back has to be like the tolerances. I think it's probably gotten a little better maybe since I've, but I've, I've tried to fish it pretty hard. I guess it can only get better. But between that and this little thing f messing with me and then just that, I don't know. I just watched the Prey. Have you guys watched that on Hulu? The new Predator. Man, he does look cool. But I'm trying to make myself think that that's that Predator face, right? And so it's got a mean look to it. I just can't, I don't know, I can't make myself really like that part of the reel. Over here, I like all this. I actually like this drag star, even though it's plastic. I, like, I think it looks better. How this is made looks better than, for sure, the the standard one. I did like the, the 2016 Alderbaran BFS. I like that one probably as good or better than this one. But to regular older Aldebarans, the Corrados, most of your Shimano's, that crazy, just straight, either five or six star, I do like that better. I think that looks pretty good. Oh, no, I got a little red nut on there. Just I had this on the Tetan at one time. I may put it back on the Tetan. It does, doesn't does really look 100% good on the Tetan, but man, those two together just are like magic. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Keep it under an hour. Stay tuned. Got a lot more coming. Cameron asked me a question. Do you trust ordering stuff off AliExpress? I'm going to answer this question within a few minutes so I can keep it under an hour. But yes, Cameron, let me just tell you this. I've spent way too much money on AliExpress. For being cheap stuff, I bought a ton of cheap stuff that I didn't even need to buy. But here's the deal with AliExpress. AliExpress will get you your money back if you get scammed or just something goes wrong with one of the stores you're buying from. Because AliExpress is basically just a hub, a place to go buy stuff coming straight from China. Not everybody, as we probably all know, is legit in China. But AliExpress, I can honestly say I'm not in cahoots with them whatsoever. I'm definitely not a communist, just so you guys know. But... They are legit, and as far as they know, if they want to do good business and, and have a good reputation, they want the customer satisfied. So any dispute I've ever had, if it makes it to the point where I can't figure out the dispute with the seller, I just file a little complaint or whatever it is through AliExpress. I've never not gotten my money back on whether, if you guys may remember right, uh, what was it? I don't know. There's been a couple things. Like one guy, I, I paid $70.00. Oh, I can't ship the rod for that. I'm like, dude, I got my money back. Uh, it's happened twice now. You know, you'll you'll click a very good deal on a rod. It happened just here recently with the DMX, or no, not the DMX, the Pista, Pista 2 or whatever. You guys remember those rods? Man, those would have been awesome to get for $55. They're like $120 now, but I would have liked to have gotten one of those. But I'm trying to keep this under, oh my God, I could get out of here within an hour. But yes, to answer your question, 100%, I would recommend that you're not going to get scammed. AliExpress is not out to scam anybody. I'm not saying that one of those stores somewhere on AliExpress may not try to scam you, but you should not get jacked up through that. Now, I've heard a couple of people say, talking about don't use your, I just use PayPal is how I go through there on, a, you know, I set up, I have a PayPal, I've had it for years, so that's what I use, PayPal to pay anything through AliExpress or through Tackle Warehouse or wherever I buy anything online. All right, guys, I'm gone. I got to get out of here. Keep it under an hour. Thanks for watching. Whatever you do, get out and go basketball and have fun doing it.